we're dealing with the sources of violence in our communities. The meeting included an amazing group. Again, you can Google this. You can Google any of these, URDT, ROCA, CDI. Probably not many of you have ever heard of CDI. It stands for Center for Digital Inclusion. Um, there's been a lot of hubbub, a lot of kind of sometimes self-promotion, I'd say a lot of times self-promotion, talk in the last decade or two that digital inclusion is a key to solving poverty in the world. People don't have access to the internet, they don't have access to being effective participants in their societies, which is some element of truth. But the idea that technology is going to solve these problems, at least to me, and probably most of you, always seem at best a little naive and superficial. Um, CDI is based in Rio. Uh, it was founded by a remarkable young man. Well, he was young when he founded, about 25 years old. Um, his name is Rodrigo Baggio. I was a successful uh, 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 IT entrepreneur. And at the age of 25, he said, well, I've made plenty of money. I don't need any more money. I want to do something. Um, I met Rodrigo at a meeting in, in England about two years ago. And then I happened to be, coincidentally, in Rio about a month later. So I said, could I visit? And he said, yeah, just come to the first center we established. How many of you have ever seen the movie City of God? City of God. It, it's a very difficult movie, but it's, it's quite a remarkable movie. It, I went to the favela was that, where that was filmed. Now, the favelas in Rio are very interesting because literally the city is designed and planned around areas that are kind of roped off. I mean, you could call it an apartheid type system. I think that maybe is a little extreme. But it's not like there's limited movement. But you know, these are places where poor people live, very poor people live. They're very violent. The police do not go into a lot of these. This particular favela, the police do not go in. It would be way too dangerous if they went in. So we went in with Rodrigo and a couple other people one afternoon, about a year and a half ago, and sat down with a woman named Maria who was, uh, I'm guessing, about 70 years old and was the, the director of a community center where they had internet access. Now, this is a, almost, to me, kind of a bizarre set of images because here is basically what CDI does, Center for Digital Inclusion. By the way, it's now in every favela in Latin America. It reaches uh, several million young people a day. Um, it's an amazing success story. It's now uh, they're establishing CDI centers in the Middle East, starting in Jordan. Um, uh, digital, um, uh, Microsoft, Dell love this operation because this is like what they've been saying all along, you know, internet, computers, solve poverty, which is, as I say, at best a little bit simplistic. Um, but as Rodrigo said, it's kind of like honey. You know, the kids want to get online. But here's the way CDI works. It's really simple. Um, you come to, um, now they often open uh, internet cafes. Um, this was actually just a community center. And Maria uh, was the kind of the madre, the, the, the woman who kind of held it together. And um, you get, you know, training in internet, but the initial training has one little facet to it. Um, you get trained up in internet, but you have to do a project. It can be anything you want. It just has to be for the benefit of your community. And you have to use the internet in the project. That's it. So that's the first, like, you know, 10-hour training that they offer for anybody who's interested. Uh, then they have a whole social enterprise fund that they've set up. So then they can fund the people to start businesses that use the internet for the benefit of their community. Uh, I think Rodrigo may be the only person. There's three of the fellowships. There's the Ashoka Fellowship and two others. I forget that are kind of like Ashoka. I think Rodrigo Baggio is the only person who's all of these fellows. He's a truly amazing guy. And he's got an amazing system that somehow uses the internet to attract young people at risk, connect them, but then help them reflect on how they want to make their community a better place. When I first met him, when I first went to this favela, we sat. And I don't know about you, I've been in a lot of intense conversations in my life. And I don't mean intense, I don't just mean emotionally intense, I mean kind of energetically intense. And there are occasions, I, I've had this experience many times, where really, uh, in the middle of one of these uh, conversations, the time really does work in a different way. And I'll never forget sitting there with this 70-year-old woman and this um, 25 or 6-year-old young, younger woman. And she was telling me about her father, 
who apparently it actually was actually one of the key figures in that movie, or he was the historical real person upon which that character was based. He'd been in jail for much of his life. I mean, obviously these are places of intense violence. And she was talking about her father's transformation through his engagement with the center. And he kind of said, well, how is this happening? And I have to tell you, a half hour before she told that story, I heard the whole story. Don't ask me how. I, I kind of knew where the conversation was going, and it got to a moment of an incredible quiet, where, you know, time was not time. And there was a, well, uh, best, the simplest way to, uh, for me to describe it is just an energy in that circle of about 10 people, the young girl talking about her father, who after being in prison for 25 years, came back and got involved with the center and whose life has been totally transformed. And then I found out later he was actually the lead character in that movie. He was a very, very violent man. So um, I'm just telling you these stories because I know no other way to kind of quickly get to the heart of this.